Alright, let's go in three, two, one. With Coach Jack Sidlecki here, another Tuesday night at Maury's. And Coach, let's uh, let's start with if you thought your defense was gonna have that many turnovers, <laughs> you you gotta look at the positive there and did, really just did a number once again, but yet was on the field for a long time on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, it was one of the strangest games. I mean it, we almost went through a quarter without having the football, without running a single play and I've never had that happen in 33 years of coaching, but uh, if Steve Santoro hadn't had the interception, we actually would have played the entire third quarter without running an offensive play, and it, it was it, just a strange game. I mean, they drove the ball 80 yards or whatever it was, 17 plays, and then we get the touchdown on the fumble, so of course we kick the ball right off to them, and they go off on another five minute and whatever drive. They had the ball for 13 minutes and 20 seconds in a row. We didn't run an offensive play until there was a minute 40 left in the third quarter. And then we had actually six very good plays in a row, got down to the 15-yard line, fumbled, had the punt with, and the safety. We didn't get the ball back until there was seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. We ran 12 plays in the second half. I, it was kind of indescribable. I mean, we just didn't, and yet we were still ahead. I mean, it was 10-9 going into the you know, the last five minutes or whatever it was. And, they, you know, they put on a good drive. you got to give them credit for what they did at the end. And But our defense was exhausted. They had been, they ran 92 plays. They ran 92 plays. And what a lot of people have, I haven't heard said is they also ran 86 yards downfield along with Bobby Hebert. The whole team was running down there with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it was it was just a very strange game. I mean, obviously, we, we created four turnovers. Uh, we only had one ourselves. But in games like that, the one or two mistakes. I, I said uh, on Sunday, we dominated that game in the special teams, and yet two special teams plays that went their way were crucial in the game. Their kickoff return, we had the kid pinned in at about the 25. He broke out, ends up in our territory with the ball. That led to their only touchdown, and then the punt to the one-yard line. I mean, that was nine of their points came off of two special teams plays, and yet Tom averaged 45 yards a punt. We had one, we held one of the leading punt returners in the country to zero yards. He didn't have a single return, but it's that's what happens in close games. You know, one or two plays just really get magnified. The fumble, the uh, the punt to the one yard line, and that kickoff return. Really, that that was it in the ball game. It's, it's unbelievable. The uh, it was just a bizarre game, as you said. Turning the focus to Penn and. Uh, Five Ivy League games to finish out the season, and what do you want to see happen between now and Saturday? Well, I mean, I think, to be honest, I think I've already seen it. I mean, we're, our attitude's tremendous, and the players are focused on this game, I think even more so than after the Cornell loss. I mean, we've lost two really – we're five points has been the total of what we've lost the two games by. And it, you know, I thought after the Cornell game, some players were son and coaches. I mean, we all we were very discouraged. You know, it was and you know everybody bounced back and we, we, we made it. I had the impression Sunday that the players were just so intent upon Penn and so intent upon this is we know that you know this is the we got to have this game if we want to contend. This is the game we got to have. And I mean, we're ready to go. They, the kids are practicing hard. They're they're mentally getting prepared for Saturday, and that's really important that the loss didn't linger. That uh, you know any of that, and I, I think you know. And Penn, I, I don't know if you saw their statistics, but they scored 15 points in their game. Their total yardage in their scoring drives was 17 yards. They recovered a fumble at the two, punched it in for a touchdown. They had an interception at the 20. They moved it six yards, kicked a field goal. They had an interception at the 18. They moved it seven yards and kicked a field goal. And they had a safety. So this is going to be an interesting game. <laughs> two really good defenses, uh, two offenses that right now have, are lacking consistency. And that's what we've got to find. Penn also brings a good special teams, just as Yale has. They've got a young kicker, Andrew Sampson, who's done well for them. So it's really it's two teams, and we seem to say this every time Yale plays Penn in recent years, and that's why the games have gone to overtime the past two years, but in many ways very evenly matched and similar styles, it seems. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Penn, if you go to their websites or you read their publications, they have really put a lot of emphasis on the special teams thing because they have lost six games in the last two years as a direct result of kick game. You know, our game two years ago, the ball went off the upright on a field goal. They lost to Cornell on a missed extra point by one point. 
They lost a game that they, that they missed two extra points. They lost a game where they had a punt block for a touchdown. And that has been their, I mean, you look at their record over the last, their losses over the last three years. Five of them have been in overtime. Uh, they've had all these crazy kick game things happen to them. And all of a sudden, they are better. And they've got a field goal kicker who's making the kicks. That was their, their number one nemesis of, for two years ago and three years ago. And they are a very improved team in that area. So we match up, we're, and we both play the same defense. So we're definitely mirror images of each other right now. A lot of superlatives have been used to describe Mike McLeod, but I want to ask one, have you ever coached a guttier player than that? I mean, Mike is playing hurt. I, I, I honestly I didn't even know he was going to go back in the game after that last one. But this is one of those injuries that's very hard to contend with because he feels good. And I, the second play of the game, he caught a screen that he was gone. I mean, and all of a sudden this thing twinged on him, and he like, you know, he had to basically pull up, and you know, and then he stepped out of bounds, and it ended up being I don't know maybe a 25-yard gain. It was going to be a 70-yard touchdown. He was gone, and I know it's just frustrating him like crazy because it 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 happened probably five or six times in the game, and it's it's tough. I mean it. it he seems better. He said he feels better today than he did last Tuesday, which is a good sign. Um, obviously, we need Mike uh, healthy and ready to go. Just, just, you know, he's a superstar player. He, there's no doubt about it. It's probably as big as the league gets, and it's just amazing as uh, watching that he can have that same work ethic because it seems rare that the superstars also have that same drive and desire. And, and, you know, the other thing, we named him our MVP for the week and, you know, on offense, on the offensive backfield. And, you know, some people like, you know, he only gained 60 yards. If you watch Mike play every play, watch him pass pro, watch him block, watch everything that he does, he's the most selfless kid on our team. He just plays hard, goes after it every down. He, I, I'm amazed that he's not discouraged, to be honest with you. I mean, he looks you in the eye after the game and hey we got to get better we you know got to get healthy and gotta, you know we need to win and, you know we got to find a way and that's his only concern and it's a great attitude to have in a, in you know the kid that's got that kind of ability we've got Casey Gerald coming a little bit later tonight and is, is he one of the guys that you call like a, a poster guy for what you want when you're t selling Yale football someone who has done very well starting for several years and a, a really a, a leader on that defense and also someone who's excelled in the classroom here, taking advantage of everything Yale has to offer. Yep, classroom, socially, everything about him. I mean, Casey is a leader on our football team. He's a leader on campus. He's involved in community outreach. He's involved in many things on, on our campus itself. Uh, his, uh, he's obviously a tremendous student. He's a candidate for the Dratty Award, which is a top academic award in the country. He's a candidate for a Rhodes Scholarship. Uh, so obviously, you know, his academic credentials are, are beyond reproach. And he's a three-year starter on our football team. And one of the greatest kids, another kid who's playing through some injury, you know, had a hip surgery that uh, has become somewhat of a chronic injury, and he has to play with it. And he, he, he deals with it. And, uh, you know, he's, Casey has a great sense of humor. And he, he's kind of one of those self-deprecating guys. But, you know, he's, he's similar to Mike. He's tough. It, it, I think he handles it a little bit different way because he, he tends to joke about it and just say, hey, you know, I'm getting old or this or that. But he, he's just as tough and, and just as gritty, and, and he wants to play and he wants to win. And there's no question, he is, he is the poster child for what the true Ivy League student athlete should be, and he's one of them. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. That's Jackson Lucky, the head coach of the Yale Bulldogs.